Hello everyone, and good day to you all. I wanted to talk today about ammo inventory management. It is a very important thing to have some sort of system. I'm gonna be talking about my system, and if you already have one, then that's great. Uh, maybe some of the stuff I talk about here could be good ideas to add to your own system. Uh, and if you don't already have a system of managing your ammo, I would highly recommend to uh, maybe take a few things from this video and at the least just have some way of tracking how much ammo you got. So I'm gonna start this off is probably the most logical place to start off, which is you just bought ammo and uh, what to do with that. So in my case here, I've got a full case of a thousand rounds of S&B 9mm, not sponsored by them or anything, it's just this was the cheapest stuff on SG ammo at the time uh, that generally in the past I've noticed has been pretty reliable. So the very first thing I like to do is uh, just as a ballpark estimate when I get the case, whether it's you pick it up from your local gun store or you get it delivered, uh, I like to take about 10 rounds for every 100 and I do just like to uh, open up the box and inspect a few of the rounds now. These are 50 round boxes, so I'm gonna kind of take a few boxes out and just check them. And what I'm looking for is just to make sure there's nothing irregular. So just kind of quickly looking at it. And I'll just take a bunch of random ones out just to have a good sample size. Um, but I'm looking for any irregularities. Uh, also looking at the primers, those are pretty easy to see, of course, just by taking this out. Um, the reason I do this, this is something I have only started to do recently after uh, I was loading a few mags of 762 by 39 and I actually had uh, one round of uh, Tula ammo uh, completely cracked. Uh, it would have been extremely dangerous to shoot that. So just kind of looking for cracks and uh, any other deformities or issues and just making sure they're all good here. So these all look good. Next, once you've taken and looked at a good sample of the rounds, as I said, I'd use about 10% of them, it's gonna be actually storing them. What I would recommend for storing them is gonna be the steel military surplus type of ammo cans. This is one of those that looks like it, but you can see by the tag here, this is um, just one I picked up from Harbor Freight and I think you can get them on like Amazon and stuff like that too. Uh, I don't like these as much um, because the hinge, the pin that it hinges on in the back, uh, it doesn't go all the way through. So sometimes when you open it, it's pretty easy to just separate the lid and it, it's annoying. Uh, the military surplus ones have a pin that goes all the way across and they're just a lot more durable. If you are picking up the actual military surplus ones, however, do um, ideally, if you actually have like a military surplus warehouse in your area, actually try opening and closing them because some of them have been pretty beaten up or rusted and they're even harder to open. So if you don't have any of those, then these will work fine. Uh, they'll seal up fine. That's the most important thing is make sure you're getting one that can seal up well to keep out the elements and moisture and uh, throw in a silicon packet if you are in a place that's pretty humid. My area is generally extremely dry, so it's not too big of an issue. It's not something I worry about too much. If I have extra silica packets on hand, I will throw one in, but it depends on your area. That may be something you, that may be significantly more important or less depending on how humid it is in your area. Now, one more thing on the topic of storage. When I have boxes like this nine millimeter where it's just a box and then you open it and you have the ammo just like this, uh, I just store it directly like that. I don't know how relevant this is gonna be going forward given the Russian ammo situation, but if you do buy a bunch of Russian ammo, for example, Silver Bear, as I have here, I do recommend uh, removing the outer box and uh, usually what I do is I just cut it down like this and um, the reason for that is that way I can still identify if you see here this says 3p on it in Cyrillic characters and then what I do is I just uh, cut down the box so I still have info on what it is and then I just put the lot number there on the back as you can see 3p and then there's a 3 uh, what looks like an x because uh, I have two lots in my storage of silver bear You'll be surprised how uh, it, it's just a little bit of cardboard, but if you have like a thousand or two thousand rounds or more, it actually does start to save a, quite a bit of space and just unnecessary bulk when you're loading them, uh, less annoyance and all of that. So kind of field stripping the ammo boxes of just unnecessary over packaging. But for your normal ammo, uh, once you go ahead and store it, one thing I would say is make sure that you're rotating. So the stuff I have in here is a not too old, but still it is older ammo. So I would recommend to take your older ammo and bring it to the top 
and then put your old or uh, and then put your newest ammo towards the bottom. Now, one exception here. Uh, so that's assuming everything else is equal. If, for example, and neither of these ammo are like this, but if you get lacquered cased ammo or ammo that has the primer sealed or the some seal around the bullet, that stuff does tend to store a lot better for longer term. Um, so in that case, I will generally try to keep that lower in the box so I don't use it as much, uh, even if it is the older ammo. Of course, you should take it out occasionally, maybe once a year if you're really wanting to store it long term, and just make sure that a few rounds will still fire correctly. But if we're just talking identical cases, so in this case these are both brass, they're non-sealed, then I'm going to put the oldest stuff to the top. So once you've finished putting the actual physical ammunition away in a storage box, one other thing, really quick, that I did want to mention, uh, label. If you have multiple boxes, make sure to label them or write on them with a paint marker of what's actually in them. That way you don't need to sort through them all, especially if you're using the military surplus ammo cans like I recommended. If you're not labeling them, it would be kind of annoying to have to sort through like 10 or 20 of them and have no idea which one is what you actually want. So then the actual next step is going to be writing down the ammo that you have. Personally, I prefer using an Excel document as I have here for this. Uh, another option, of course, pretty much any spreadsheet software, if you're looking for an open source solution, then LibreOffice, especially for uh, a kind of, uh, don't use it a whole lot because Excel does have a few more functionalities that I do like, but if you're just doing uh, ammunition inventory management, that's not too complicated. So it'll work totally fine for that. And in the future, I might code something up. I've been considering because this has a few shortcomings, but this is pretty simple here. So what I'm going to do, how I like to sort things, is I like to write down the caliber. So I'm going to go with exactly what I said here. So 9 by 19 The manufacturer is something that I do like to write down because different manufacturers are better or worse. And that way I know if I only have, for example, a bunch of Tula left, that I should probably get some better ammo. Uh, but we're just going to write s &B here. The next thing I like to write down is the bullet type. Now, one other thing you might want to think about here, of course, this is... It's a standard FMJ. One other thing that I do not account for is uh, not all jacketed hollow points as I have here. My carry ammo, Federal HSTs. These are really good carry rounds. However, not all hollow points are made equal. There's a lot of good ballistic tests out there showing the terminal performance and some hollow points just do absolutely terrible, uh, whereas others do great. So something that I probably am going to add in the future that I would recommend is maybe put like a purpose column here and say, for example, this is carry ammo. And then, and then this, of course, would just be training ammo. Now, bullet manufacturer, this is also something I like to keep a uh, column for, separate from the main manufacturer. In a lot of cases, as you can see, this is the same, like I got CCI, CCI. But especially when you're hand loading, and there is a few other occasions as well, uh, the bullet manufacturer is going to be different than the actual manufacturer of the cartridge, which if it's hand loaded, it's going to be you. Uh, but as a good example here, this is just a partial list of everything I got because uh, there's no need for you to see my entire inventory. But this Federal 762 by 51 I have here, this uh, manufactured, so the rounds themselves are made by Federal. The bullet is using a Horn DV Max. It's just good to keep track of that, I feel, as well. In this case, I assume that it's made by s and and uh, since it's just training ammo, I don't really care as much uh, if it isn't correct. I, I care more about this on carry ammo and hunting ammo and that sort of thing. Since I don't really know, it's just a standard FMJ, I just usually put none in here for this case. Bullet weight, I do like to keep track of as well. Again, mostly goes back to for carry ammo. Uh, however, on it depends on the manufacturer, but you'll generally feel more recoil, or I should say, assuming all of the things are equal, a 124 grain and a 115 grain bullet for the 9mm, you'll feel more recoil on the 124. So I do like to keep track of that just to know what to kind of be expecting. I prefer to practice with 124s because they have better terminal performance and it's more similar to what I actually carry. And another thing I like to keep track of is the case, what it's made out of. This is brass. I don't have any of the 545 on here, but this is one place where it's different. So, for example, if I did have some 545, let's just say... Let me just write that like I normally do. So take, for example, if I have some Vimple uh, Golden Tiger, usually that's FMJ, and that's, uh, I usually use it as training ammo, but it does decent enough. 
for terminal performance. This will just be the same here, but where it differs is those are of course steel case, but I usually like to write in here what's on the case. So silver bear, of course, is steel with a, I believe it's nickel coated. Uh, and this is lacquered. So I do like to keep track of that because the lacquered ammo, as I kind of mentioned earlier, with why I like to store a primer sealed ammo a bit longer, this is another case where I can keep track of that. And I, and I would say lacquered steel cases are uh, more of the long-term ammo that definitely stores quite well. But going back to the actual ammo here that I got, the s &B, the last thing I'm going to put in that is, I would say, probably the most important is the actual count, which is a thousand. That's the adding process. Pretty straightforward. Now, going to deducting the ammo counts. So for me, I usually like to deduct the ammo counts when I load the ammo into the magazine, not when I'm actually firing it, because if I'm firing it out at the range, I'm usually wanting to focus on other things like my trigger squeeze, my form, my actual accuracy down range, and all of that. I, of course, am somewhat keeping track of how much I'm shooting, but it, I don't want it to be on the forefront of my mind. So I'll usually, when I go to the range, I'll just preload a bunch of mags and take those out. And that's when I will subtract the count. So let's say, for example, I load up two magazines of this s &B ammo. I usually just prefer to do this by converting this to a formula in Excel and also in LibreOffice. You can do that by just putting an equal sign in front of it. And uh, I use a P320 with a, usually with 17 round mags. So we'll just say I took out two 17 round mags. So that leaves me with 966 rounds left. This is the part I don't really like as much because it's kind of easy to put a typo in here. Generally, you'll notice it, but there, I think there has been a time or two when I didn't notice that I had a minor typo and then my ammo count got a bit off. So that's why I'm kind of thinking of coding up my own solution potentially in the future. But once I've done that, I usually just like to convert this back to a regular number. Uh, it's just how I prefer to do it. Doesn't matter too much. And then every time I load up another mag, of course, I deduct this. And then of course this process is gonna repeat once you run low on ammo and you need to order some more. For me personally, I don't have a set number on what I would say is a good reorder point. I usually go based on, it changes based on the caliber and how full the box that I'm storing the ammunition itself in, how full that is. So taking nine millimeter as an example, usually I go about a half or a third of the box. Once it gets to about that point, I want to reorder a bit more. Assuming that all things are equal, I will usually pull the remaining ammo out and make sure to use it very first. And then that entire box goes back uh, in the shelf and uh, then I pull the second oldest, just go from there. And very quickly, I did also want to talk about loading the magazines and how I do it. It might sound really basic, but I do have a little bit of a system for this as well. It's not terribly complicated, but I thought I would mention it uh, because, I don't know, lately it seems like I've been seeing a lot of uh, people's guns exploding from uh, bad ammo and that sort of thing. So the way I do this uh, is it, it's also a kind of a good way uh, with this method that I'm about to show uh, just for safety. So starting off with the basics, I have 30 rounds here of Silver Bear. I'm going to go ahead and open these up. Of course, these are the Russian paper bags I was referring to earlier. So just gotta pull the staples. So I've got these all poured out. Uh, the very first thing you probably have already picked up on is I am wearing gloves. I would recommend wearing gloves when you're loading magazines and handling a bunch of ammo. For one, especially in the case of these soft points, this is an exposed lead tip here. So I just you know, don't wanna get a bunch of lead on my hands because I will be doing other things. Um, also, this will help. It's somewhat more minor. It really depends on just what else you've been doing, but this does help also if you're, especially if you're keeping these mags loaded long term. This will help to keep any oils and that sort of stuff that's on your hands off of the ammo. Vice versa, this also helps to keep any grime that's on the ammo, which it doesn't look like there is because these are nice and silvery, but you'd be surprised after you go through 30 or more rounds uh, how dirty your hands get. So it's just a way to kind of keep things clean. Uh, and in this case, mostly it's because of the lead. So I don't think it matters too much. But what I'm gonna do, do here is, I'm, I'm almost certain that I do have 30 rounds um, because those are 20 round ammo boxes each and then the other one that I laid out was just a 10. But I do still like to actually lay out the ammo in rows. I usually do rows of 10. It doesn't really matter how big of a row it is. 
point is that they're all uniform. And I just like to count it out. The reason for that is it doesn't matter as much on an AK, but uh, there's a few AR mags where you can force in on a 30 round mag, a 30 first round, and of course it doesn't work very well when you do. So I always like to actually just count out the exact amount that I'm gonna be loading just to make sure that doesn't happen. And you know, sometimes you will have 30 round boxes of ammo that you're loading, uh, sometimes 50. I actually have a bunch of 50s at the moment, which is a bit odd, but uh, it seems Norma has kind of gone that direction. Uh, 20s are pretty common, all that sort of thing. So I just like to make sure. And uh, this is also a, a bigger reason why I do this. It, it's to double check. So earlier, you remember I talked about kind of checking when you first obtain the ammo, check about 10% of the rounds to just make sure they're all good. This is the second check and when you're really checking 100% of the rounds that you're about to load. And this is just to make sure, again, exact same sort of stuff, that there's no issues, there's no cracks, uh, all the primers are good. I'm just looking at all that a lot more carefully this time. And also just making sure these are actually all the right round, uh, i.e. there's no like 300 blackout uh, going into a 5.56 mag. So here we go, I counted out all 30. This one's going in a different direction, it doesn't really matter. But I've got 30, and uh, I've looked, and these are all good. So, last thing I'm gonna do is actually load the magazine, which is very straightforward. The only thing I would say, which uh, I feel like is pretty obvious, but uh, I once saw a person loading rounds the wrong direction in a magazine. So, uh, do make sure, for one, that they are going in the right direction, but also make sure to uh, push these all the way back. Personally, I like to do that as a separate step, so I usually pop this in and then slide it back. Uh, if you're kind of doing it this direction, which I feel like is a bit harder to hold on this angle, but then gravity will help you. So this part is gonna be more so personal preference. Just make sure that uh, you're pushing those rounds all the way back, and uh, you should be able to tell pretty quick if they're not facing the right direction. Now all of this loading right here is, this part in itself is very monotonous. Uh, you can do other stuff, like watch TV if you want, while you're loading the mag. What I would say, however, is it's fine to not really pay too much attention to what you're doing at this step right now when you're actually loading it. Uh, but I would say for the rest of this, to pay really close attention, make sure that you're actually checking each of these rounds individually. It seems like a bit of a pain. I can understand that. It does take a little bit. Um, but it's better to be safe than sorry. If you shoot enough, you will it most likely encounter... Even with some of the better brands of ammunition, at some point you will have defective ammo. Uh, most likely it won't even be a big enough of an issue to actually catastrophically fail, um, but it could be. So it's always good to be on the safe side for something that, you know, it takes a little bit longer to uh, kind of individually check all these and all that, but it's not that much longer. And uh, in the long run, it's definitely worth it. If I didn't do this type of system, I definitely would have never caught that uh, ruptured case neck, for example, and uh, yeah, all sorts of issues like that. But that is it. So, magazine's all loaded. I like to tap it a bit just to make sure these are all fully seated back. Just push on the top ones a bit, and this is good to go. This magazine is all set. And then one last thing I would recommend to at least think about is to separate your kind of just training practice ammo which i would say this is it's just standard fmj uh, from your actual carry or defensive or real use type of ammo i would recommend to have probably at minimum a thousand rounds of good real use ammunition uh, and then just however much uh, practice ammo you can really afford and also just manage to store and have room for important thing is to just make sure to cycle through your ammo uh, and to kind of have a system to keep track of it all so that is all I had for this video, talking about my own system for managing my ammo inventory. Let me know if you have any other questions on this, or uh, also I would love to hear if you have your own system and you have any suggestions for things that you do that I didn't really talk about in this video. would love to hear it. I'm always looking to improve my own system as well. Otherwise, thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all in the next one. Take care.